Hey Elvis fans, I'm here with my friend Andrew today, friends of Elvis and he's been a great support to us, great help getting this uh, information out and on YouTube. Uh, I wanted to give a little background, by now most people have heard uh, uh, I'm Reno Fontana, I've been evicted from uh, Elvis Presley's house. Uh, quite frustrating, been a very difficult challenge as one might imagine. However, um, being that I'm a uh, glass half full kind of guy, uh, I am the only person out of seven billion people on the planet ever to have to leave Elvis Presley's house. So, in uh, one regard, uh, there's a uh, bonus, uh, but it is, uh, uh, in all seriousness, a uh, small plus. A lot of people are asking, after reading accounts in the news media, uh, why did uh, I get thrown out? Uh, what did I do wrong? And the answer basically is uh, nothing. I've shown my friend Andrew, I have the court documents, everything is here. He's read through those and he might uh, just confirm at the end of this uh, video that he did see them for himself. Court documents uh, said that, in fact I won't tell you what it said, I will read it to you what it said. It said, Fontana has produced sufficient evidence to show that the notice of default recorded by Financial Bonanza on 9707, bear in mind now, this has been going on five and a half years, this lawsuit, was extinguished. That means there was no notice of default to carry on. Declaration of Fontana paragraphs 16 to 7 establishes that by uh, May 14, 2008, Fontana paid defendants $114,970, which exceeded any delinquent amounts due. The second paragraph said, Plaintiffs, me, Fontana, have adequately established that the notice of default was void because it was based on a trust deed that secured an obligation to pay usurious interest. So here's the question. How can I be right in court but still be on the outside of the property looking in? And that is a question that will be answered at trial May 20th, 2013. That's when I go to court against the lender. I file the lawsuit against them. On three separate occasions, uh, and this is all public record, anyone can look this up. It's all available through the court system. On three separate occasions with three separate judges, the lender asked to have me evicted. And the judges all said no said there cannot be a proper eviction if the foreclosure, what we call fraud closure, was illegal. On a recent hearing prior to going to trial one day, we got a commissioner. Now in California, a commissioner is less than a judge and this commissioner apparently did not know what had happened in all the previous times in the last five years and he said all I know is the lenders got a writ of, uh, writ of possession I'm gonna give him the property. You can imagine I was stunned, my attorney was stunned. We had 53 hours to vacate a home we've lived in for nine years. Really pretty incredible to know that this can happen. However, in light of all the millions of illegal fraud closures that has happened over the past five years uh, and in light that uh, some of the major banks made a 25 billion dollar settlement with the uh, United States government it was a, a mea culpa the banks got together and said okay just stop looking into our lending practices we'll pay 25 billion if you just sign off and forget and let us move forward and that's what the government did the problem was so big the United States government had no choice but to uh, let it go and just accept the money. So, fraud closures, illegal foreclosures do happen, and they've happened frequently. And in my case, it just happened to happen to the Elvis Presley estate. Uh, I'm a big Elvis fan. Everyone knows that. That's why we bought the property in the first place. Uh, people are probably saying, okay, well, what's the fight about? The fight basically is about money. Again, I showed my friend Andrew, uh, who would be posting this online for you. Uh, an appraisal I had on the property for a little over 14 million dollars. I owe about two million dollars on the home. That's a big margin of equity. Uh, 
Grace, uh, Grace and West, the term that the New York Times gave us several years ago, can be just that. It can be a huge uh, uh, business. Uh, uh, Elvis fans in Southern California uh, have come to see this property on so many occasions. I literally today have friends from around the world, people from all over the world have come here. Uh, so this fight is about money, quite simply. Um, that's why the foreclosure occurred. I do expect to win, prevail at trial. Um, the property, when I took it over, uh, was vacant. Uh, we have documentation of that. We have photographs showing it was vacant. After the uh, eviction, the lender was saying that I stripped the property of all the memorabilia. In fact, they didn't say I stripped it, they say I stole it. Uh, I've got uh, documentation. I bought and paid for everything in that property. Um, I think now that their motivation, the lender, is to have a scorched earth policy. And for those of you that are astute in history, uh, back in the days of uh, the Middle Ages, uh, back in the days of the Roman times, if someone was losing, they would burn everything behind them so the winner had nothing left to gain. They have beat me up in my reputation. Uh, it's been a tough time. Now, don't get the wrong idea here. I'm, I'm not an angel. Uh, I owe about $50,000 in debts that I have not been able to pay. I admit that. But I have not had the income uh, without having restrictions against the property to be able to take care of all of our debts, pay the attorneys. The, the attorney bills right now are over $200,000. We just crossed that threshold. It's been an enormous, expensive battle. Uh, I'm looking for an attorney to finish this for me on a pro bono basis uh, or contingent upon the uh, outcome of the trial. Uh, if there's an attorney out there that would like to make a name for themselves, please uh, give me a ring. Uh, you can reach us through our uh, uh, email address uh, on this uh, video. But uh, it's a tough battle. Uh, it's not one I'll give up. Um, people have said, why don't you just walk away? I don't know how to walk away from a fight when I'm right. Um, it, it, it's just not something that I can do. If I walked away, my legacy would be tainted with the idea that the lender was right. I've got a trial in another 83 days. And when we get to trial, uh, we'll have 12 jurors decide uh, what's right, what's wrong. I feel confident that we're going to prevail just based on uh, all the uh, uh, initial rulings that we've had from the court system. Um, difficult time, yes, but uh, a fight worth having. I will never quit. So um, that's another side of the story. Uh, I hope that uh, you will take it, withhold judgment of any kind until after May 20th. That's when uh, the trial begins. Again, we've got 10 days uh, scheduled for the trial. And uh, after the trial, if I were to lose, uh, have your own opinions. But if I were to win, I would uh, hope that you would temper uh, any early opinions uh, with the idea that uh, let's wait and see what uh, the outcome of this trial will be. So uh, I want to thank my friend Andrew for letting me do this. Uh, I want to thank you folks out there in uh, the world uh, who are watching this uh, for giving me an opportunity to speak and uh, stick with us. May 20 is almost here and we'll know then uh, who the winner is. Thank you so much. So long.